Hey folks, it's Roger Quinn back again, and in this video, we're going to have a look at how to create comic art type sound effects, like this type of thing, like crash, bang, creak, wallop, you know, all that sort of nonsense, um, this sort of thing, okay? Um, there seems to always be a, f a very similar way that that's, uh, that appears in, in most comic art. So, um, and there are some var variations, obviously. I'm going to show you the technique I use. Uh, I'm sure that it can be adapted and modified to suit the style that you're, you, you want to use for your own artwork uh, because it's a fairly um, adaptable and relatively easy technique too, hopefully. So I think what we might do is I'm going to just show an example of how um, I'll, I'll look. I'll get rid of this word here, and we'll have a look at how to um, create a, a new sound effect word to go in here. Okay. Uh, now, just one thing to clarify on the artwork we're looking at here. These are actually Photoshop files. Okay. I tend to work uh, digitally, and I use primarily a combination of Corel Painter and uh, Adobe Photoshop. Most of what we're looking at here is Photoshop layers. I use Painter to do a lot of my comic line work and I use Photoshop to do colouring and tone and text boxes and things like that and speech bubbles. However, this uh, sound effect type, yeah you could do that in Photoshop and obviously other programs as well, but I tend to use Adobe Illustrator to do uh, these effects and then I import them in. The reason why I do that is I think, frankly, I'm probably lazy and I find it just a little bit easier um, to create these things in Illustrator. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, but you might find you can experiment around and create a very similar thing directly in Photoshop anyway. So we'll, we'll have a look at the technique that I use in Illustrator. Starting with an A4 page, uh, because that's approximately the same size that I'm working with in Photoshop. And this way it will allow me to get the scale very similar uh, so that I don't have to change things around too much when I get to Photoshop. And um, so simply starting with the type tool, I'll just type an appropriate sound effect word. And we'll, I'll just enlarge that up so it's, well, frankly, big enough to see for the, the demo here, but also approximately the right size uh, for the comic. Okay, there we go. Whoop, we've got a very strange asterisk at the end there. Uh, sorry, exclamation mark. I'll just type that again. That's better. Right here, that is a painfully boring font, and I guess you could work with that, but I'll um, show you the font that I typically use for my comics. Um, I usually use, where are you, this one called Impact and you can possibly see why um, Impact tends to, for me anyway, resemble the, uh, I guess that sort of sharper geometric edged type style that, that was once hand drawn and I think the reason for that is because the sharper edges and straight edges are a lot easier to draw by hand. That's probably why that has that traditional look to it. Uh, and that's why why I use that font because I like that look. I don't like I, you can use any font you like, but I personally prefer that traditional look. Anyway, another thing that I always do when I'm doing this effect is I squash up the horizontal scaling. And I've just done that in the character or type uh, manipulation tools over here. The reason why I do this is probably type purists out there screaming at me, but we're not doing pure type here. We're doing comic art effects, so to some extent, it doesn't matter. Type purists. Anyway, um, the other reason is because I'm about to apply a distortion effect on this, and it tends to stretch the type out. Okay, so I compensate when I start by squashing it up a bit. Okay, and then the second stage uh, in Illustrator here, once I've typed in my, my word is I then use one of the envelope distortions. Uh, now I've seen this done quite successfully with the Make With Mesh. So you can try that. I actually personally prefer to use Make With Warp. Uh, I think again, of course I'm lazy, and this is a relatively quick um, starting point for the effect that I'm after. Now I'll just hit preview on this um, so that you can see what it does. 
Okay, that's pretty much doing the, the effect that I want. It's probably remembered one of the last settings. I'm just mucking around here with the, um, the bend amount, okay, just by moving the sliders. And I can also fiddle with the horizontal or the vertical distortion. And I'm still only working at the moment with the uh, first of several options there to play with. You know, there's all sorts of built-in uh, warp distortions there. Uh, I tend to always use arc, and then I fiddle with the um, usually the horizontal setting. I very rarely use the vertical one. I guess I've used it sometimes, depending on the effect I'm after. Okay, but we'll leave it at that anyway. I'm sure you're getting the idea. And something like that should suit the artwork that I'm going into. Remember, I want to stick that basically going across this section here so it will uh, hopefully suit the action that I'm working with. Okay, so that's back in Illustrator. That's the first part of that effect done. And now the second part that I do is uh, I like to try and uh, kind of remove some of the automated filter look to that. It looks it looks just a bit too clean. I like it looking a little bit hand drawn and messed up. So I'm not actually going to distort the edges, but what I am going to do is distort exactly where some of those letters are sitting because uh, I just prefer that look. Uh, so to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is remove that envelope uh, frame that it's putting around it. And you can do that just by going to Envelope Distort and uh, uh, not Release, but Expand. Okay, so it keeps the effect, but it's no longer got the envelope on it, which means I can't go back easily now and uh, manipulate that. But um, it means I can, if I'm using the Direct Selection tool, select the individual letters and move them around. And that's exactly what I want to do. I just want to get a little bit of, as I said, something looks a bit messed up, so it's not quite as computer clean. And I also use the free transform tool. Okay, so I'm just going to put some very slight rotations on a few of these letters here and there, as I said, just to mess it up. So I'm going to move that one up a tiny bit. Yeah, progressively, basically, move all these in a little bit closer to each other. And perhaps I'll grab the O there. Uh, for the purpose of the demo here, I'll do this fairly quickly because uh, I'm sure you get the idea. Okay, I'll just mess that one up there, go a little bit higher. Yeah, I want to do this, if you go too crazy with, you know, changing every letter and, you know, rotating every single one, that in itself starts to look boring, uh, graphically boring, I mean, uh, because you're sort of doing the same thing on all the letters. And it doesn't then achieve that hand drawn look. Uh, it just ends up looking like it's, you know, sort of somehow mathematically messed around. So I'll just do this to a couple more here. You know, sometimes I might change the scale on a couple of letters here and there, but what I'm trying not to do is lose that envelope um, distortion that I had. But I do want to just mess it up a little bit. Just move that in a bit closer. And perhaps I'll just put a large scale effect on the uh, exclamation mark there. Why? I don't know. Because I can. So it looks looks good. Right here. There we go. As I said, I reckon you get the idea, so I won't keep fiddling with that. He says as he keeps fiddling. There we are. Okay, now, one other component to this that's worth knowing about. It's something I do tend to do a fair bit. Just going to move that up a touch on the screen there, and I'm going to just regroup that for a minute. Or well, perhaps it's already grouped. Yes, it is. That's fine. And I'm going to make a copy of that. Okay, so I'm just using the uh, option drag to make a copy. And I'm now just going to explain something about putting outlines on these. Okay, I've just gone with a white fill with a black outline. I just want a fairly simple effect. But just to explain uh, a couple of things, when you're using the outlines in Illustrator, as you'll see on the duplicate down here, uh, just be careful when you're putting very thick lines because you tend to get that happening. And what's happening is that it puts the line on uh, either side of the original vector, which means that slowly but surely it's going to fill in the original letter shape, okay? which is not so good. 
So if you want a reasonably thick outline around uh, your type, this is one way of doing that. You make a duplicate, and I'm going to run with, I'll, I'll make it four point, and then you'll clearly see the effect. And then what I do is drag that copy back on top of the other one, and then send it behind. Okay, so in a sense, it's, whoops, just rotated that. It's on a layer now behind the original one. Okay, so that means we maintain the original uh, letter shape. Okay, and that original one's still got its outline too, which I'll show you how you can use that as an effect that you might like in a second. But most importantly, we're getting a thick outline, which is sort of helping to join the whole thing together a little bit, but we're not losing the letter shape. Now there are, yes, I know people out there yelling at me, there's other ways of doing that that are, uh, some people would say, a little faster using the appearance menu. Um, important thing to know about that, effectively, it's doing the same thing. And my simple little brain understands this method uh, really clearly. I get it that there's the two layers there, and it means that any time I can go in and very easily select the one I want to mess around with. So as an example, just to show you a, a related color effect, Let's just say I want to do a, you know, fill that with you know, red or something, and um, to separate, and a common effect that you see, uh, with say a white outline. Okay, like that, a very, very common comic art effect that you see on text done there, and very easily achieved. As you see, just using those two layers, our original letter shape is still intact, and that sort of background thicker um, effect is. Um, helping to achieve that thicker outline. I think I've actually slightly offset that there when I clicked, but I'm sure you get the idea. Um, I guess another way you can be using that, um, I'll just revert that back to outlines, uh, sorry, not color, and then just offset. Okay, if I'd filled that background one there with uh, more, uh, say, with a, a black fill, you can see that you can get a pseudo 3D effect. Yes, I know. Before you scream at me, I know you can do full 3D in Illustrator. That's not my point. My point is you can get some of these traditional comic sort of effect looks just by using that one effect of the uh, thicker outline behind, the thinner outline in front. Anyway, you can muck around with empty hearts content. I'm just going to run with that uh, simple method there. And there we go. Okay, so that's the effect that I want to work with. Uh, and of course, I should save that. Just in case I need to go back and edit the artwork, let's assume I've done that. And then because these are both Adobe programs, I'm working with CS6, by the way, here in this demo. You can, of course, do this in CS5 um, or CS4, CS3, even as far as I remember, and certainly in any newer versions. And I'm going to copy that and just go to my Photoshop file that I want to work with. Whoops, my scrolly mouse is going nuts. And um, simply paste. And because we're in two Adobe programs here, Photoshop uh, immediately recognizes that's an Illustrator file coming in and it says, oh, do you want that to be a smart object? And I'm just going to say, yes, I do. And what a smart object does is this. It essentially is still going to maintain some vector information. Okay, so what that means is we're in Photoshop, it's essentially the world of pixels, so we're set at, in, in this case, 200 dpi, or ppi, pixels per inch is what I'm working with, but as a smart object, this thing is still going to pick up on the vector information from Illustrator, and it means I can scale that around a little bit and it's not going to lose its resolution. So if I just brought in a, a JPEG version of that and tried to scale it, of course it would be enlarging the pixels and getting a bit fuzzy. But as a smart object, it means I can manipulate that around. Um, so that's why I tend to do that. So that copy and paste straight in allows me to do that fairly quickly. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that size there. That will do. And um, when I'm ready to rock, uh, I think you can double click or you can just move to another tool. And it says, well, do you want to work with that? And I say, yes, I do. So I'm going to place it. Okay, so placing it means it's now sitting there. It still does know that's a vector smart object layer. Okay, so it's put it automatically as a new layer. Um, but it's essentially now removed some of those manipulation uh, abilities. Um, anyway, uh, that's really the, the essence of that technique. Uh, sometimes I actually go in and I use some layer effects 
uh, to separate the background. I've done it on that bit there. Um, it, it's not something I do very often though because I, I find that you know, too many fancy effects like drop shadows and things done in Photoshop. So like what I mean by that is using the layer effect drop shadows and things. Uh, it just starts to make it look a little bit too, too digital. And I've just gone to a whole lot of trouble to try and remove some of the digital nastiness. Uh, so why would you replace it? Um, and I'm not saying don't do that. Of course, if your, your style tends to want to make use of those digital effects, go for it. But in this particular case, I don't think it really needs it. So anyway, that's the essence of that technique, using Illustrator to make the word effect to bring into Photoshop and to place it in as part of your artwork. I'm sure you could find ways of creating something very similar directly in Photoshop, but as I said, I find that this is, um, for me, a relatively quick way of creating that artwork first in Illustrator and dropping it in uh, into Photoshop. Okay, hope that helps. Have fun with it, and I'll see you in another video. Bye now.